This demonstration is on printing a lino cut. Before you start, gather all your supplies. In the photo, you can see the carved lino block, baby oil, dish soap, the already cut paper, a wooden spoon, paper towels, gloves, ink, ink knife, brayer, ink slab, and you can't see it, but I strongly recommend an apron. Before inking, briskly dust the surface of the plate with your hand to remove crumbles of linoleum and dust generated through carving. Bits of debris will lodge in the ink. Show extra care around small, fragile areas you've cut. Start by squirting out some ink on the slab. Today I'm using Speedball oil-based relief ink. If you have saved ink, you can open that by cutting the twisted part close to the ink blob. Then use the palette knife to push the ink out. Normally, I would work the ink with the knife a little, warming it up and homogenizing it, but this is a pretty nice consistency straight from the tube. Check for dried ink blobs, called boogers, and pick those out. This ink is in great shape, so I don't see any at this point. Lay out a thin strip of ink at the top of your slab. Now use a clean brayer to roll out the ink. At the end of each pass, lift your brayer to allow the roller to spin. This way, every time you set it down, you are inking a new side of it. There's a small oval in the center that's not taking ink. When this happens, it's typically due to there being a small amount of oil on either the slab or the brayer. You can try to incorporate it into the ink. If it won't incorporate and the area won't take ink, you will need to scrape up the ink clean the area and the brayer, and begin again. As you lay out the ink, never apply pressure with the brayer. The ink should easily cover the area you are rolling onto. If it doesn't, and you are trying to force it, you probably need to add more ink. This is the proper way to set the brayer down. It should never rest on the rubber roller. Aim for a nice, thin layer of ink. It should make a hushed, soft sound as you roll it. Now I will show you what it looks like if you use too much ink. Oil-based ink dries very slowly, so don't feel like you need to rush because it can stay out for a couple of hours. This ink sounds like Velcro and forms sharp, shiny peaks. Notice the difference between the proper amount of ink below and the excessive amount of ink above. The first rollout is matte, with even, minimal texture while the second is glossy and heavily textured. If you apply ink too thickly to the plate, it will push down into areas you have carved or build up on the surface and create blobby, squishy-looking edges. Overly inked plates also oxidize faster, making your print iridescent, like an oil slick. If you've accidentally rolled out too much ink, set your brayer aside and scrape up the ink. Now, roll out whatever ink is already on your brayer. Chances are good everything you need is already there. Allow the brayer to glide over the surface of the block. Continue pausing after every couple passes to let the roller spin. Apply the ink going in different directions for an even application and to reduce overlapping lines. You can ink your plate on the ink slab or on a scrap of paper or cardboard. Try not to let the edge of the brayer rock down into the carved away areas. If this happens, use a paper towel to scrub away the ink. You can also tear a tiny piece of tape to temporarily cover ink you don't want to print. You are looking for an even application on the plate. The plate has a dried ink booger on it. I don't want to leave that there or it will show up as a blob in the finished print. It can be carefully removed with a pencil and then the ink in that area needs to be refreshed. Before printing, check if there is any ink on the registration grid. 
Ink that gets on there must be cleaned off before printing or it will transfer to the paper. A little rubbing alcohol on a paper towel will do the trick. Remember to work on the back of your mylar. Once ready to print, the inked plate goes in the middle rectangle in the center of your registration grid. Carefully line up the paper on one side and lay it down over the plate. Once the paper has made contact with the ink, you can't move it. Use your hand to hold the paper firmly in place. Use your hand to prevent the paper from shifting. Then use the spoon to apply pressure to the back of the paper. Apply a lot of pressure. If you are printing with a delicate rice or mulberry paper, you will need to be more gentle, but with thicker paper like this, it requires a lot of pressure. Turning the spoon on its edge enables you to use more force. Always keep one hand flat on the back of the paper, applying firm, even pressure. Never rub with the spoon if you aren't also holding the paper in place with your opposite hand. If the paper shifts, your print will be blurry. Like with the brayer, rub the paper in different directions for even coverage. With one hand spread holding the paper in place, you can carefully peek to see how the print is coming along. You can see that this one is not finished. The ink is not evenly applied. I strongly recommend doing this before you lift your paper off. Here's the finished print. You can see it's the reverse of the plate. Every print in the edition should look exactly like this one. 